Greetings all, this is Harry Nick. And this is a less Harry Justin. And Justin, once again, we have more X-Wing things to talk about. It's we do. Indeed. I'm enjoying it. Indeed. Me too. So, in today's episode, video, whatever you want to call it, of the Harry, Nick and Justin show, um, we are going to talk about the new points that have just dropped. So, these are the ones that coincide with the new expansion packs that are coming out. Uh, the squad packs for the Rebel, Empire and Scum faction. As well as a few more spoilers that we had that... We didn't know since we made a video last time. There's uh, another talent for the Defenders and a couple of other upgrade cards. Look, we'll talk about those as they're revealed in the points so we have a bit more context. Um, hmm. With that, any further ado, Justin, let's um, dive right into it. Um, starting off here with the Rebel points. Um, so, added onto this faction are some new B-Wing and A-Wing pilots. So, at the top of the page here, we have some... Uh, B-Wing pilots, starting with Harrison Dula at 52 points. Uh, only three points more than Braylon Stram. That's very interesting, actually. Braylon Stram is initiative... Four. Four? Yeah. Now, and Braylon Stram's ability is going... quite powerful, so I... Yeah. yeah. But, but so is Hera's. Uh, yeah, so Hera's ability, I suppose, is a bit more Jankyard rather than Braylon's, which is just straight-up attack. But still, three points. Yeah, for sure. Ooh. I mean... You could run Hera in like a mass B-Wing list, sure. Um, but 55 points, it's a bit more than you generally want on your Jankyard chips. You know, you want them to sit around 50 each. If a couple of other chips are a bit cheaper, that seems okay. That seems really, really solid. Um, I would have thought Hera would be probably not quite 10 points more, but sort of more in that territory. Like 60 points would not have surprised me with this, so... Uh, that seems really, really good for you Rebel players. It's a great option to have there. Um, moving down, Netrum Pollard, uh, initiative three after your barrel roll, choose a friendly ship if you're not stressed at range one to zero. That ship gains stress token, you rotate 180 degrees. Uh, yes, this was one of the other sort of... More... Junkyard builds? Well, no, it's actually more towards uh, B-Wing builds because it's about sharing around stress tokens. That seems well, yeah. pretty competitive. Um, yeah, Braylon, Tenum, Netrum, you're still well shy of 150 points of that thing. You could Ooh. get a four B-Wing build with this kind of thing in it. Or oh, oh, three and a couple uh, of ships or whatever. Yeah. I was going to go three, something with a coordinate and... Yeah, yeah, get yeah, a sheet of Yeah, some good upgrades. There. For sure, man. For sure. Um, that seems yeah. just really solid. I mean, it's not crazy cheap or anything like that. It's it's definitely worse than ten num, and ten num is two points more. So you know, it's sitting about where we expect. But um, considering it supports an existing archetype, I think that's really really solid as well. So uh, both B wing pilots very very competitively costed there, in my opinion. Let's move down to I the A wings. Uh, the R Z one A wing. So Ahsoka here, uh, Fulcrum, at 49 points. What do we think of this? The fact two Force talents, she's got three Force as well, a ridiculous ability. I, yeah. Oh, boy. I love the blending of the, of the multiple talents, but it's Force, so it's two Forces. It's a, yeah. That's cool. Ah. Oh. Now, we don't really have time to dwell on any of these too long in this video, so in the comments, hey, what can you do with two Force? Um, let's break this. <laughs> um, apart from that, Hera is seven points less. That seems about right. Hera still yeah. solid on the A-Wing. Um, so Hera in the A-Wing is 13 points less than Hera in the B-Wing. Uh, I mean, I think either is a good option for Jankyard, depending on how you balance that list out. Uh, mm. You might want the extra two uh, the extra red dice from the B-Wing or the extra flexibility from the A-Wing. I think... I like her ability too much on an A-wing, so I'd probably go towards that. I feel like um, I feel like her is going to sit better on the A-wing yeah. in a Jankyard build. That's yeah. a far better use of her talents. I think, I think we're probably right. Uh, Sabine at 37 mm. points seems pretty competitive as well. She is more that, expensive than Jake Farrell. That is Farrell. insane. So, <sighs> yeah, but like you look at her ability, it's better than I, Jake Farrell. Oh, that's that's a tough call, man. I was oh, no. Say, like, like <laughs> ultra fearless. Yeah, if you can get into range one, I mean, initiative three, uh, I, I would, 
looking yeah. at them separately, I'd put them in a very similar kind of points ban myself. It is only three points, so it's not the end of the world. To me, Jake and Sabine are very similar. Um, but they're hmm. not doing the same thing. Okay, we're not talking about two hardcore dedicated aces. Jake is Jake is great because of the versatility he has, and Sabine can fly really, really aggressively. Just got to be careful because she's only initiative three, so she's not going to be able to like outmaneuver the high initiative ships as easily. Um, nevertheless, hmm. very, very interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. Next, we have Wedge at 35 points. That's great. Uh, that th- that is insane. Yep, uh, two points less than Sabine. Again, I did call that these would be quite similar, uh, hmm. but it's a great little. I don't want to say pocket ace, but it's a nice little aggressive ability on that kind of a platform. You yeah. know what? Initiative four, I mean, like whatever. I'd probably prefer Jake yeah. most scenarios, but still. Hmm. I don't know. I think it. The, the problem with Wedge on the A-Wing is that because he's the young Wedge, he's only getting the abilities on his normal attack as opposed to a missile attack. You're also only paying 35 points for him. Yeah, exactly As opposed right. to 54. It seems, so, it seems all right. Yeah, I, I completely yeah. agree. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't think Jake is made irrelevant by the other parts. I'm just putting that out there. I just nah. think... But nah, they are I think we, They are different. I think we're going to see some, uh, some five of A-Wings or... At least four A wings and something else. Indeed, indeed. A bit more in rebels. Uh, moving over to Shara Bay, uh, we've got her at thirty-two points. That seems okay. Uh, yeah. While you defend and perform a primary attack, you may spend one lock you have on the enemy to change. Uh, sorry, to add one focus result to your dice results. Um, it's solid. I don't know how much A wings just want to be taking target locks, but. Yeah, as I said, like if it's got a turret, if it's got a, sorry, a missile or something like that, it seems okay. It's Mm. obviously worse than all the ones we just spoke about. And it's a few points less. So that seems about right to me. Have we spoken about Derek before? I don't recognize. Yeah, Hobby. 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 Of course. That's, yeah. I needed the, needed the context. After you acquire Spender Lock, you may remove one red token from yourself. Yeah, cool. So pop some missiles on there and have a bit of fun. A nice little attacking yeah. ship. Uh, I mean, at 30 points, he's the same price as the Green Squadron pilot. Yep. You still get two that, that seems pretty good. Yep. Yeah. You'll play him instead of a Green Squadron pilot, which is fine. Uh, skewing <laughs> the game more towards named pilots is absolutely fine, in my opinion. So I am down for that. Scrolling down the page, we don't have any upgrades or anything. Oh, yes, we do. Uh, vectored cannons. This is the new A-Wing configuration that allows you to point the cannon backwards instead of using vectored thrusters. One point. It seems pretty competitive. I would have thought two or three. Oh, but, um, that seems pretty good. It's pretty much just upside, so I don't know why you yeah. couldn't take it in most scenarios. I mean, if the list is really, really tight. As you said, like five of a wings maybe there's just not quite enough points to do that um i don't know this is going to be a conversation to Mm. have around list building but i feel like one points is not very prohibitive at all we have the b6 blade wing prototype and that's two points yep adds the gunner slot um for two Two, points two points for a gunner slot that's fine it doesn't really have any good reasons to take gunner like i know some people are interested in like suppressive gunner and and various cards it's just none of these options wow me just yet but you know yeah playing something around will happen with, one day yeah playing around with titles and slots and something something could happen so it's worth keeping an eye on one last card here for the rebels hopeful um one point so they've actually costed all of these um various adjectives uh what, what, what do you say like uh, these cards where there's one for each faction and if a friendly ship blows up big upside happens um, one yeah. point, I think, is probably Ooh. okay. I like the um, versatility. I like yeah. the redundancy. And I like how much these cards help new players. Personally, I think I like uh, Disciplined, which we'll talk about later, a oh. bit more than Hopeful. But, I mean, I'm an Empire player as opposed to a Rebel player. So, yeah, I have a slight bias. <laughs> I don't see these cards being amazing in tournament play. But they could be. Like, they seem accessible hmm. enough that... It could be great in tournaments. It could be a good learning tool for beginners, or it could be either or both, yeah. and that's pretty cool. Well, I think also like these will be good for if you have a couple of points spare at the end. Yeah, oh you yeah, just for chuck sure. these like, on. There's no yeah. downside on these cards. Remember that. 
Um, hmm. People have commented on these previously, like saying, oh, like you're planning for failure. Like, no, you're ensuring yourself against failure. It's not like yeah, it's- Dead Man's Switch where you there's too much agency for your opponent. This one feels like it's a lot a lot friendlier, a lot fairer. Yeah, it's a bit more redundant yeah. than... Yeah. yeah. Planning for redundancy. That's okay. Yeah. Redundancy. Planning for redundancy is okay. Don't um don't stack yourself so far that you know your list doesn't do anything if your ships don't blow up. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. These are not doing that. These is a nice, simple, cheap uh, talent that you can use. You know, if you weren't using talents already, um, or you know, you don't want to spend heaps of points on something like Juke or Trick Shot, which you know, I don't know why you wouldn't take Trick Shot, but you know, that's something you can I'll do. Always take Trick Shot. Yeah, that's yeah. something that you can do if you really don't want to spend four points. <laughs> I, I understand. Not everyone's, yeah. you know, a Trick Shot. Do, do you remember like when Trick? It was Trick Shot at one point, or was it? Was I think it was it always it was two one points or two to begin points. with. It was oh, yeah. the golden was era so of second edition. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. Oh man, I love TikTok so much. But um, um, circling back to this, yeah, hopeful looks sick. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. All right, let's move over to the Empire. Taking a look at the uh, Defender and the Interceptor. Scrolling down until we find something. All right, the Tie Defender. So, yes, let's talk a bit more in depth about this because this has been a hot button topic, Justin. Vader. Has it? Has it? Uh, I mean, Vader. No, I mean, no one cares. No, what am no, I talking about? None. <laughs> Vader at 115 points. Now, like, as I said before, I'm not going to say this is definitely good or bad. It's more than what I thought it was going to be. Like, I was thinking closer to 100. Um, I think we were both pretty much on board with that sort of thinking there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like the the, um, the rah, 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 Vader's too much, he's trash. Rah, 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 no, he's still good, he's going to be great. Fight, fight, fight. That's happening on the internet right now. <laughs> it's very entertaining to watch, but I, I just, I just want to reiterate, this is completely unprecedented. This kind of ability on this kind of platform, it, there is an insane amount of upside on this card. Like, Initiative 6, 3 yeah. Force, Defender, the, the most versatile small ship we have in the game. It's powerful. Yeah. I think yeah. we're not going to know if it's great or trash or somewhere in the middle until we get some actual tournament results from this kind of thing. So I'm not willing to say it's, it's, it is either way. I think it's probably a little overcosted. And in my mm. opinion, I don't think it's as great as it could have been if it was close to 100 but I'm not going to say I'm not going to you know make make yeah. a hot take or something like that. I'm just not ready to do that. Um, no, um, yeah. and the fact that he does lose the adv- is it advanced sensors, the uh, sensors, he, the sensor slot. Yeah, so he can't take yeah. advanced sensors. Yeah, so losing the sensor slot is big. It's probably I mean, okay. do you then it's probably it's probably yeah. the right call? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. do you then look at him being more of a missile? Cannon shooter with the elite config? Maybe you just pop on hate and just leave it as is. I don't think you want to use the new configuration. I don't think he wants no? to lose the free evade tokens. They're just too valuable. Yeah. When your ship I suppose. is 115 points. Yeah, you want you it to stay points stick on around. Vader, that's 57 points. <laughs> it's, that that's feels like pretty most good. Ships. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's like destroying most ships. So. You you keep that you keep the regular baked in ability I think yeah okay um yeah mm. that's where I'm at with that one uh, let's just take a look at Vault Scarus Initiative Five oh this has gained the um strain token to recover and you take the action at the start of um when you engage instead of when you activate during activation um that's interesting mm. hmm. yeah eighty two points it's points point more than Vessery more though. than Vessery yeah great. <laughs> Vessery's yeah, really Vessery is, good. <laughs> Vessery is normally your, your go-to. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I mean, mm. oh, also speak, not hyperspace which, legal. I, I'm keen for Vessery Vader as a build, but that, that's another discussion. That's another discussion. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I think that's probably too much. I would have pipped Vault at uh, probably a few points less than Vessery, not a point more. Um, yeah, I, I would have gone 80 I mean, uh, the ability has some pretty insane upside if you use it correctly. It's just yeah. kind of awkward the way it works. It doesn't interact with Initiative 6s very well. 
Mm. Mm. Yeah, 80, 79, 78, something like that. Uh, mm. Is it even better than Riot? I, I, I'm sort of thinking that too. Mm. Oh. Yeah, but isn't Vault Scarus a higher initiative than Riot? I can't remember. Uh, Vault Scarus is initiative five. Oh, but Riot, Riot's, uh, Riot, yeah. she's doing her own thing. It's like yeah. you're playing your your own game. You don't interact with your opponent. You just do cool maneuvers. No, just f- four four K every day. I don't care what initiative she is. She's great no matter what. And Captain yeah. Dobbs is seventy five points. Meh. Yeah. Let's move along. Um, moving down <laughs> to the tie interceptor, uh, we have well a whole bunch of hyperspace legality. Um, everything's yeah. in hyperspace apart from generics. That's kind of fun for you guys that play hyperspace. But in terms of our new cards here, we have both Gideon Hask and Sienna Ree coming at 48 points. Now, I know a lot of people in the comment section is going to say, I had some pretty hot takes <laughs> when we spoke mm. about Sienna Ree originally. Like she's got to be like less than 40 points. Otherwise, the downside on her card is so bad, it just makes her unplayable. No, I disagree no. with that strongly. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. There's got to be a pretty decent chasm between her and Suntia. I don't know if six points is enough, but she's also initiative six. Like, I keep coming back to that point, and I think... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I... <sighs> yeah. I think in the end, should it be like 46 at around Vault Scarus points? Could be. Like, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. And these could maybe, be like overly but- conservative choices. Same with Vader. Yeah. They might both be just completely conservative on the part of FFG. And like, oh, we're just going to be careful because we're introducing a couple of Initiative Sixes with some weird abilities into the game. Let's not yeah. let's not uh, you know accidentally create an all imperial meta by making them a few points less. Let's go potentially a few points over just to be careful, and maybe they'll come down later. That's sort of what I'm thinking there. Yes, yes, I agree with Hask as well. Uh, Vault Scarus, forty six points, seems okay. Seems okay. I've got no big um, beef with Vault Scarus at that. Like that ability on an interceptor, I think. Like, we've spoken about this. Like, I find it interesting on Interceptor because of the double repositioning he can do. It's still five. It still interacts poorly with Initiative Sixes. Like, I'm thinking about the traditional list with two Interceptors and another Ace. Like, I don't know which of these would be the second Interceptor next to, obviously, some Defel. Um, I think there's a case for Vault Scarus and Gideon Hask in different kind of builds, and I like that. I like that they're, they're obviously not the typical highly tuned Imperial Aces. That's kind of cool to me. Uh, Commandant Goran, initiative fall after a friendly ship at range zero to three with a low initiative than yours executes a maneuver. It may perform a red focus. Pretty solid ability. Um, initiative four. It's not for aces. That's fine. I like that a lot actually. Um, in terms of like a uh, swarm support, I like that it, the Empire is getting these kinds of tools because it really is an archetype that should exist on the Empire. It's clearly a design push from FFG. And probably AMG going into the future. So this compared to like Howl Runner or something like that. Uh, Lieutenant Luria. I'm not so interested in this. It's a very AC ability on Initiative 3 ship. So yeah, it seems pretty cheap. So, you know, whatever. And Nash Wind Rider. Yeah, during the engagement phase after a friendly small ship at range 0 to 3 is destroyed. If that ship has not engaged, spend the charge to uh, allow it to engage at the current initiative. Yeah, and it's the one recurring. So you can do it once per turn. Uh, yeah, pop that in with some Academy Boys. There's a lot of things I want to try with um, Swarms. Uh, let's scroll mm. down. We've got a couple of new things happening in these upgrade cards. Uh, the Tide Defender Elite is a two-point card. Now, um, as we said when we first had a look at this, it's not really necessarily upside per se, because you're getting rid of the free evade. Um, but, you know, mm. multiple attacks... With cannons, yeah, the cannons aren't quite what they were in 2nd edition as they were in 1st edition. That's fine. I completely accept that. Uh, But kind of cool. Kind of cool. Like, it's not strictly upside, so it was going to be cheap. And I think two points is okay. Yeah, I think two points is okay. Hmm. Just bear in mind, if you do fly Vader and 
another defender. You can't do one or all the other. It's standardized, must be yeah, on uh, all your defenders. Going to make things a bit harder for people, but I think that's good. That's fine. And Protectorate Gleb. Hey, Justin, we got a new card. Oh, first order. First order. Pew, 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 pew. pew. <laughs> Um, yeah. uh, Vuvu's whalers and whatnot. Yes. Um. So, <laughs> for two points, you get a card that allows you to take a red coordinate, and when you coordinate a ship, well, that's how the card read writes now. Uh, reads right now. You mm. can transfer a red orange token to that ship as well. Now, uh, they've already spoken about an interaction here. Uh, they are going to change it to friendly ship because of the way it works with Honda or Naka, and you could, you know. Uh, coordinate an enemy ship and give them a token. Yeah, that would yeah. be kind of breaking. Break. That's already nah. been clarified. They're not going to allow that to work with Hondo. Whatever. That's fine. Um, mm. Completely accept that kind of ruling. But this is quite cool. The interesting part is it specifically says after you coordinate. So there's no, there's no ambiguity here. You can take the red coordinate and then move that stress token to the ship you coordinated, which is a nice, Seems versatile thing. Good. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you want to be clever and try and move tracked tokens around to reposition your ships, it's something you can do, but it's mm. it's going to be a bit of a pain to try and make that stuff work. Uh, I don't know if there's any way to abuse that mm. off the top of my head, but I'm sure somebody in the comment section will think of something. So, yeah. yeah. I like this a lot. It's Hey, j- j- ignore the, the shenanigans you can do with it. Two points, you give a ship a coordinate. That is very powerful. And oh, for two points, you'd take that every day. Yeah, um, all day, every Empire day. In first order. I mean, there's a lot of options for this, but on Scum in particular, I really like this. Um, Scum mm. is a faction that has previously abused um, coordinates. The little escape pod that came with the um, Scum Millennium Falcon is something people just play because yeah. it has a red coordinate. It's so good. It's so good having coordinates. So to pop this on. Oh, Jeez, I don't know. Uh, could G1A or Hawk? Um, a fire spray, potentially. Although I don't know if the fire spray really wants to be losing its actions. Um, uh, I was going to say, n- not on, yeah, not on Boba. Not on Boba. He can't take crew anyway, um, <laughs> weirdly enough. Um, but yeah, look, yeah. I'm sure there's lots of great examples for this. Two points, to me, feels a bit undercosted because, you know, the floor of this card is so high. I think four or five is probably correct on this. I think this may be, it might be a mistake. It just feels like it can do too much on too many different things. Yeah, I I think for Scum, it's going to be, it it will eventually get raised, maybe on Empire. I don't think realistically right now, First Order. You think it's going to have um, the the, faction specific pointing? I I think it could. Yeah, you're not wrong. Like if, like if if you look at, um, the first order. You've got two ships that can take crew right now. True. Which is the G and the Upsilon. Indeed. They- the G already has red red yeah, coordinate. Yeah, the has a white coordinate. Yeah, good point. And, yeah. So you don't necessarily need it. <laughs> True. I mean, there's still the upside of the other ability, which is not bad for two points. Yeah. But not not bad. It's interesting. But the Empire's what yeah. the Lambda, um, the Reaper. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm sure. Trying to think of something There's else. Be something else. Oh, the big boy. Oh, um, the decimator. The, yeah, decimator. Your favorite ship. Come on, Justin. Yeah, what are you doing, My, come on, come doing? on, Justin. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Calling it now, Protectorate Gleb is going to be very relevant. Um, I don't know in what, but I, I just, I look at that for two points. I'm like, oh, that's good. It's gonna do something. I can, I can see it. Yeah. I can feel it in the force. Moving right along. Disciplined, one of these sort of weird high upside, your guy blows up, something happens card. One point. Seems all right for one point. Um, also, interpolator turn. This is a new defender card that allows you to do tractory barrelly rolls when you're next to asteroids and huge ships and structures. But let's just say for the standard game, talking specifically about barrel rolls. Um, yeah. One point. To add some more versatility, I like it. Can't go on Vader. Can't go on Vader. We know that so far. Yeah. Um, but if your defender was not taking a talent, I don't see much downside in taking something like this. Um, yeah. On Riyadh, I like it on Riyadh a lot. 
Ooh, repositioning actually, yeah, before really? uh, before the the, the K turn spams. Yeah, you, you you need to have enough points to obviously put these on, but then not enough points for something good like your crack shots or. Well, that's what I'm anything saying. Else. If you weren't already taking a talent, which a lot of them just don't. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah, like Duke's already quite good, but this is one point and Duke's seven points. It's, yeah. Yeah, I like versatility. Versatility, always good. And the Defender is all about versatility. That action bar is Indeed. great. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It doesn't have a great action economy, but it doesn't need it. Versatility. I like it. Mm. I like it. 